What is clacking, my fellas? We finally made it. We made it to Formula One. Thankfully, me and my dirty American Dalal still salivate a few desperate teams looking for their own daddy stroll. Despite my colossal fumble of the F2 22 championship that I pretty much led the entire season thanks to inconsistent AI levels, as we've already learned, the FIA and F1 teams are not above accepting questionable sponsorships as long as they get their bag. So what's the bag deal? I mean, the uh, big deal of adding a little of my crazy 88 branded Yakuza seasoning to the overall pot. After all, we do race as one, right? The one specific team that is super desperate to not only have a degenerate like me behind the wheel, but desperate for an American degenerate. Oh yes, I'm coming back home after a few years in Europe. In 2023, I will be the one true American Formula 1 driver for the one true American Formula 1 team. Pass F1, baby. Let's go, Gunther. Let's go, Gene. F Logan and his Benedict Arnold ass going overseas to find a drive. Why couldn't you find a single point all of last season, huh? You f My shoulder's still sore from that. I'm gonna make it my goal to destroy you this season. I'm gonna f you up and I'm gonna f you in the mouth and I'm gonna eat your the only notable thing in this driver career mode series is I did lower the level of acclaim I received to make it as difficult as possible for me to successfully renew my contract with Haas at the summer break. If I performed any way like I did in the last parallel universe, I actually may not make it a full season as an F1 driver in 100% driver career mode with no assist, flashbacks, or race restarts. Now that we got all that sorted, let's check out these never before seen angles of the paddock and engineers, courtesy of virtual reality. If I had the space, I would totally walk around the entire garage and circuit, but alas, I am trapped in my tiny room. But hey, at least I could ghost ride the whip. This is seriously arousing my virtual production muscles. Just think of the possibilities. Anyways, just like my F2 season, I will be driving out every single in and out lap for every single session. Why? A lot more chances of shenanigans occurring between me and a green track and cold tire combo, and of course, some AI tomfoolery. By the way, if the audio sounds different, I forgot to switch the audio settings from immersive, aka driver POV, back to cinematic. It's actually bonkers how much more immersive the VR driving experience is in this audio mode. With the added weight and limited field of vision in VR, it really does feel like you're wearing a helmet. I do remember to change it back before the feature race. Aside from a couple small moments, I actually have a pretty decent inaugural practice session in an F1 car. I was actually fairly consistent thanks to the practice I got from my race against 110 AI a few weeks back. Check it out if you haven't. It'll give you context of how slow I am. <laughs> Alright, let's head back to the garage and practice our in. What the f***? What the f*** is this? Seriously? I've never had a game crash like this before. For f***'s sake. Driving in VR is such a troubleshooting nightmare. I called it a session as I decided to count that software crash as a technical DNF. Now's a good time to go over some other parameters for this career mode. Any software or hardware crashes on my end, whether it's my wheel or my VR or Steam VR or the game, if, that, if they crash during a session, I'm going to treat it as an actual DNF, just like in real life. I usually like to take the car out on a heavy load for at least a 10 lap stint after completing the practice programs to serve as an actual practice and preview of how the car feels when bloated up with fuel. But scratch that, I guess. I will also only participate in FP1 and quick practice the rest of the days to save on time. If I crash out of that one free practice session, or DNF somehow as we just saw, that's all I have for the weekend. I'm also considering turning on the auto upgrade to simulate a clueless driver and just let my engineers figure out the best direction to build a car. Let me know in the comments if you guys actually want me to upgrade the car on my own. I really don't know what I'm doing, so it might be more entertaining that way. I set the difficulty to 96, which is what the F1AILapTimes.com tells me to set based on my best time trial lap using the F1 war car with equal performance. Let's see how we do. By the way, I'm keeping the face and pedal cam only for the races, just to save me some more hardware headaches. I believe we're the third worst car on the grid, so if I'm on the correct AI level, I should be fighting for a shot at Q2. But ultimately, I just want to beat Logan regardless of the car performance, which I just do at P19. Two seconds off the pace. We go out again, and after some green juicy delta, I get a little overzealous on the throttle at the exit of turn 11 and torque my booty. I abort and go one last time on new tires for the final push lap. One reason why I like to take it easy on the banker lap is just so I can see that delta turn green and stay green, but it made me think I did way better than I thought and I end up staying P19 with a 132.5, still in front of Logan by two tenths. 
Nico shows off some pace and gets into Q2 by good margin. The car is in one piece after my first qualification session. I keep the difficulty the same for the race at 96. I'm a little annoyed at all the hardware issues I've been having recently, so I'm a little heated going into this race. For context, I took a few hour break between quality and the race and ended up having to spend the first 20 minutes back troubleshooting the VR feed being correctly output to the recording laptop. It was a frustrating experience to say the least. Anyboop, enough tech talk and excuses. There, you can see my strategy going into this race. It'll be a two stopper. There is me fixing the audio setting in the formation lap, which I've also learned not to just blow past everyone and probably make contact with someone causing us to start on cold tires. I'm maturing as a driver, guys. It all leads up to this. Here we go. Lining up for the first time this season. My first officially recorded, in the books, archived right. and cut Formula Let's 1 race in its 100% driver career mode with no assist, flashbacks, or race restarts. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 red lights on. And someone's turned off the light and we're off. A pretty decent start for me. It looks yeah, like one of the cars up ahead stalled or something, causing me to lift the throttle like and nearly shit. bump into the Williams right to the right of me. I managed to find an opening and squeeze past the Ferrari and up next to the Mercedes Ooh. and nearly past it, but I have a Norris to the left of me that I have to contend with and it is going to be a drag race going into turn four. Wow. Wow, what a start. Wow, what a start indeed, Driver Simon. We keep checking out mirrors, checking out insides to make sure that Norris isn't going to go up there, and we secure P8 right behind the Aston Martin. Let's tuck ourselves in for the rest of the race because we got a great start to this race. Going through the S's and never mind. Into the wall I go. I somehow lose the balance of the car while falling behind the other ones with a full load of fuel and, and I pay the ultimate price. Or nearly. The car is still somehow in this race. It's kind of what I was expecting. I'm just going to have a lonely race by myself. First Here I go, let me back into the pits Give for a medium, a medium, hail Mary later. strategy. And I guess the racing guards are still looking after me as I get teleported right before oh making contact goodness. with the pit oh, wall wow. when my Game rears lock there. up. <laughs> wow, Game that was totally a close saved one. Me there. Honestly, if that ended my race there, wow. like, I would have retired as a driver. What's like, that might have been more embarrassing than just uh, crashing out on the first turn. Perfect job on the turn in there, mate. Looks like a nice stop time. We're happy with that one. All right, we'll be doing one more stop today. One stop left in this strategy. Well, welcome to Formula One. I'm about 40 oh, seconds behind the next car, and without any sort of train to hitch on, I end up falling back lap after lap to the point where I felt like I was right oh, back in that Red Bull going against 110 things. AI. My confidence seriously took a hit as I start questioning whether or not I'm actually at a 96 mm, AI scary. level. I started on my team Korean mode just for Very fun scary. and I've been getting absolutely destroyed in that mode to the point where I dropped my AI level to F122 numbers. Mm, Once your confidence there. takes a hit, it's so much easier to make small mistakes. And as we learned in my previous video, those small mistakes add up. Check out that video if you haven't by the way. Only about 14 laps in. I start to see the dreaded blue flags. Oh my god, I hate blue Naturally, flags. I lose a buttload of time trying to let them pass. A few few more laps in, I get some more blue flags, but this time I try my best to actually try to stay behind them. A VSC is Got deployed it. when Blank retires on lap 20. I honestly forgot who retired. Decide to use this to my advantage and I pit for hearts to the end. An absolute Hail Mary within a Hail Mary. I'm now more than a minute behind P19. I was honestly thinking of just retiring the car and probably would if it wasn't for this 100% driver career mode that I'm recording. If this was my actual debut F1 race, as embarrassing honestly, as it is, seeing the checkered flag would be slightly there. less embarrassing than just I'm giving up in the S's. middle of a Grand Prix because of a stupid lap one error that didn't end up fuck smashing the car. Like fans would probably appreciate that more than if I just Mazepin it right away, right? My ego would also agree, so I decided to stick it out to the end My even though I rarely dead. ever see safety cars at red flags on dead this track against the AI. I mean, even with the safety car, this game's logic of cars unlapping themselves does not make sense to me, so I really just need a red flag to save my race. I keep seeing blue flags for faster oh cars and I even give them a little taste of what I had for dinner as they go by. Even Nico, my teammate, isn't above getting a little taste of the action. Oh, what was that? Oh. Yeah. Like I Sorry, buddy. But to be honest, that was just a bad move on my part trying to let them pass in the middle of a battle. Oh my gosh, these guys are Basically, there. the rest of the field passed me on lap 30. Okay, now it might be a good time to save face and retire the car to fight another day. Although, through this 
harrowing experience, I am learning that you can ignore blue flags for about a sector or two before getting penalized. And with that, I am officially a full lap behind the entire field. What the f am I doing? Just end me. F you, Logan. But at least now that I'm tucked away in the slipstream, I'm actually able to keep up with the cars ahead. I finally managed to find my original pace before my confidence shattered and actually make a move to unlap myself against Logan on lap 32. We've lost a little time to the cars ahead, which is going to be a monumental task for me to overcome. But let's freaking go, baby. We're still in this race. I managed to pull enough of a gap to shut those blue flags up, and I'm on the back of the Alpha Tower in a few laps time. Unfortunately, despite the Alpha Tower not making noticeable gains against me, I still get penalized going into the next lap for ignoring blue point, flags. I'm very clearly faster and gaining time to the car's head, but alas, I am unjustly penalized on my debut race. I give no f**ks and a power on. Lap 35, a wild oh, incident involving my teammate Nico forward. at the exit of turn one causes a bit of a pileup and my lightning fast reflexes had me sniffing some Italian oh, cheeks oh, in oh, attempts nice. to avoid the collision ahead. Red flag it, red flag it. Oh boy, you guessed it. Yes! You guessed it. Red flag, red flag. Yes! Everyone's okay. Yes! Okay, so red flag. Fuck yes, baby. Hell yeah, my race is alive. Never give up, baby! Truer words have never been spoken. Thumbnail and the title makes sense now, huh? Here we go. From the ashes, we arise like a phoenix from this absolute bonkers of a race. And we get off to a wild start. Almost deja vu oh with how oh I had to goodness. dodge right into the Williams. And I just get completely mollywalled by everyone around me and somehow get penalized for it again. That move was illegal, I'm afraid, mate. Return the position, give it back. Look at that, Sergeant. That was absolutely chaotic. So going into turn one, I am P17, but soon P16 with that move. The AI are always low and bunched up on the first lap, so this is my chance for redemption. Another move into T8. My battery is low and I've got a fast Aston Martin behind me. Nico is fighting for his life in front of me and I still can't believe there is 19 laps left. I fend off one attempt but eventually lose touch of Nico ahead of me which leaves me like a fish out of water. Stroll easily overtakes me and sets his beady eyes towards Nico. I've got a pretty quick Daniel behind me, so oh, I'm really pushing to stay within the DRS of the limits of Stroll and Nico. A couple of close calls on my end excite the Alpha Tower behind me, but after unsuccessful lunch from Stroll ahead, I'm right back behind me in the action. Look at that speed from the Aston Martin. Being pressed by the cars behind me, I decided to take a stab at being the lead has without permission which pisses everyone off in the paddock because I left Nico defenseless against Danny Rick. Gunter's probably gonna have a conversation about this. You let that fucking thing down, me down, which I protected you all the time, and I'm not fucking going into who is right and who is wrong. I don't want this. And he moved this, that moved and all that fucking wine, you know? Gene spent hundred fucking million a year of his own fucking money, which fucking wants to pull the plug and let everybody down because you are two fucking idiots. So I do feel bad, and now that he's caught back up, I decide to take one for the team and let him by while holding the rest off with some questionable tactics. Fend off another attack from Danny Rick, which leaves him vulnerable to Albon behind. Who, after a few laps of getting a nice look at me, he decides to take his shot, which... Holy right, shit, he just flies past me like I'm an F2 car. Damn. Alright, Alex. This is where all the action decides to take place. The last 20 laps of the race when I'm pretty tired. Constant battling and defending with the cars behind me make me forget about my 5 second penalty until near the end of the race. 
I decide to harvest while getting a tow from Daniel for a few laps and I surprise myself for keeping my composure so late in the race and with Logan pressuring me behind, I sigh enough is enough of looking at Daniel's beautiful butt at lap 52 and decide to make a lunge. I managed to upbreak the honey badger while also running away to DRS one of the best feelings in Formula 1. I start to deploy all the energy I have left because I feel like I have a chance to beat even Alex on track, but if not that, at least build a five second gap between me and last place. Oh, uh, all about battery usage for not. That's what I'm talking about. I probably won't be able to beat Logan now. The racing gods smile on me once more with the racing incident between Logan and Daniel, and I managed to be the 18th driver day to see the checkered flag right in front of Daniel. Wow, what a race. As Lewis would probably say, never give up. Honestly, there were so many times at this race I felt like giving up, but because of you, audience, I decided to persevere. And thanks to you, we have not the best race, but you know, a somewhat successful, at least a, a salvaged race, which is always a good feeling. So uh, thank you for the motivation. Seriously though, this felt like one of the longest races I've ever participated in, and I can't believe I managed to not only see the checkered flag, but gain a few positions after the lap one incident. For a debut race, it could have gone a lot worse. I could have not made it to Eve turn one like my F1 22 oh my career mode, or be like Mazepin and last a couple corners, or insert historical F1 driver here, that probably DNF before even getting to line up on the grid due to mechanical failure. Nico didn't have the best race either, so it can only go up from here with a true American team. Our season goal is to beat Williams and AlphaTauri as the best, worst car on the grid and maybe even challenge Afro Romeo or something if they don't shit the bed first. Stay tuned for Jetta coming up in the next few weeks. These videos are taking uh, a little longer than anticipated to make, but alas, I'm gonna power through just like I did with this race and just produce these videos as quickly and promptly as possible. So I sincerely hope you guys do enjoy the more frequent uploads. And if you do, perhaps you can like the video to show your interest in this career mode. It really does mean a lot as it is one of the few indicators that I'm not wasting my life out of work. Mayhaps even subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I don't know, you do you. I'm honestly just grateful that you're still here you listening to this. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or night and I'll probably see you never.